Shall we begin? Let's begin now. That's that's option C. The number two say how many bond pairs are present in ammonium molecule? Here comes the answer. Watch this clearly. Here is a bond pair. We have three bond pairs here. One, two, three, and one lone pair. So bond pairs that are present in ammonia molecule is three bond pairs. That's option C, and one lone pair. This is opposite of uh, water. Water has two bond pairs and the uh, one. Two bond pairs and two lone pairs. The number three, you see the answer on the screen, that's triazonitrate 5 acid. You should know that monobasic acids don't form acid salts. Since their molecules has only one replaceable hydrogen, example HCl, HNO3. So the correct answer there is A, triazonitrate 5 acid. Then to number four, it is called detonating gas, not detonation gas, otherwise known as electrolytic gas. This is actually a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen in the ratio of 2 is to 1 by volume. It is also called electrolytic gas, as I told you. It is gotten clearly by the electrolysis of water and collecting the two gases from anode and cathode. That will ensure accurate volume. This mixture of gases are highly explosive. So the correct answer there is option C. 5 have a structure which is asking us that the compound above. The answer is C, para compound. C clearly here. In naming disoptic compounds of benzene, you have the auto meta para. Auto means one, two. When the when the substituent groups occur at carbon one and two, and that's when they are adjacent to each other, as you can see here, when they are very close and not separated by one carbon atom, you call it one, two, and that's what you call auto compounds. Then when it's separated by one carbon one side, one, two, three, that's one, three, you call it meta. Then when it's separated by two carbon on each side, two carbons on each side, that's one, two, three, four. That's what you call one, four. That is what we call para. Para compounds. No, the structure there shows para compound. That's that's the compound there in the structure. So you see clearly the examples here and get it clear. So that's it. Stay subscribed to watch my video here on how to name dice of the compounds of benzene. The number C says which of the following is not a consequence of Hans rule? The answer is A, isomerism. To get this information clear, see you in the comment box. Option B, C, and D are all consequences of Hans rule. The number seven is talking about B, that's electron affinity. For question number 8, it should be noted that in a mixture of limestone and quicklime, 
that it is only the limestone that decomposes or strong heat into a yield quicklime. While quicklime alone is a refractory solid and does not decompose on strong heating, limestone is calcium carbonate, that's calcium triazo carbonate 4, while quicklime is calcium oxide. It is stable to heat. Then watch the calculations here. So this is the calculation. It shows the decomposition of limestone, giving you one mole of limestone, which is equivalent to 100 grams. When converted to molar mass, gives you one mole of 22, uh, one mole of CO2, and one mole of any gas at STP occupies 22.4 dm cube. So this equation, since the volume produced was 0 0.45 dm cube, it shows that we can now calculate for the mass involved. At the end, we discover that two grams of calcium trisocarbonate four was involved in the mixture. Then taking a look at the percentage, the total mass of the mixture is 3.5. Then limestone alone is two grams. As you can see there, these two grams. Then you can do the calculation here, 2, which is the mass of limestone over total mass of the mixture times 100 over 1, which is 57%. That's option A. If you have any other question confusing you about these calculations, you can use the comment box. We move to the next one. Question number 9. The answer is A. Oxidation occurred at the electrode. A. Why reduction occurred at the electrode? B. It is worth noting that during electrolysis that anode is the site of oxidation while cathode is the site of reduction. As electrolysis progresses, anode usually burns down stroke decreases in mass due to oxidation while cathode increases in mass due to reduction. Anode loses electron or electrons while cathode gains electron or electrons. So since the mass of A decreased from 10 grams to 8 grams, it shows that oxidation has taken place. And that of B increase from 10 grams to 13 grams it shows reduction and number 10 is beta another name for beta sulfur is monoclinic sulfur and is also called prismatic prismatic sulfur rhombic sulfur is also called alpha sulfur while amorphous is called delta sulfur number 11 is saying about the functional group present in secondary amine that's option c that is only when one hydrogen in the amino group has been replaced by and our key group together with the one that has been constant there so you see it from here this is it clearly so it's self-explanatory watch it well there you have the primary amines the functional groups is circled there this should be the secondary amine this is the functional group nh while primary amine has nh2 then tertiary has only the n then option d is actually for the primary amides number 12 is b showing that c is not the least reactive so it's incorrect at least once you know that the smaller the bond energies between the atoms in a molecule the more reactive and vice versa so checking the equation there molecule a have the highest bond energy which means it's the least reactive and the most reactive is molecule b2 which have the least bond energy which is 244 and so on so the incorrect statement there is option b then going to number 13 the additional number of carbon in methane is d that's four you see the calculations from here is very very simple simple okay See the pattern we followed there? Question 15 is magnesium. Magnesium ion is negative to flame test. Question 16 is A. Cassiterite, that is an ore of thin. Other ones are ores of aluminium. Then fifth, question 17, that is blood red test, which is used to detect ion 3 ion. Apart from using aqueous ammonia or sodium dioxide or ion 2, hexacyanoferrate 2 you can also use the potassium thiocyanate to detect ion 3 ion then question 18 calamine notion the correct option is b zinc carbonate and zinc oxide then 18 is talking about option b that's ion 2 di ion 3 oxide see the explanation here carefully watch this it's talking about check this there are three atoms of ion in this compound that's f e 304 out of these three one has plus two oxidation y2 have plus three and hence we say ion 2 di ion 3 meaning ion 3 there are two atoms of ion 3 in that molecule which is f e 304 so the answer there is b then watch well we have four atoms of oxygen and one atom have oxidation number of minus two the minus two times four is minus eight so that when you add up this plus two plus three plus three will give you eight so that eight minus eight will give you zero so that's the answer Number 20 is Inver. Inver is mainly an alloy of iron and nickel. It basically contains 63.8% of iron, 36% of nickel, and 0.2% carbon. 21 is oxygen gas. When you expose chlorine water to sunlight, oxygen gas is released. Do not be deceived by answering chlorine. You see the equation there on the screen. Then question 22 says, which of the following is true of an atom which with equal number of protons and neutrons? The answer is A. It will not be strongly radioactive. No radioactive isotope have equal number of protons and neutrons. Check it. 
from carbon 12 carbon 12 is not radioactive which have six protons six neutron but carbon 14 which have six proton and eight neutron is radioactive and that's applicable to other atoms then 23 says which of these metals we decolorize the blue color of aqueous solution of copper 2 sulfate. The answer is zinc. Zinc is the only metal in the option that is above copper in the activity series. You can also watch some of the video here in this channel, the color changing miracle and silver tree experiments to see displacement reactions between zinc, silver and uh, copper. For question 24, see the pattern of the calculation from the equation. It shows that 16 moles of HCl produced 5 moles of chlorine. Therefore, 4 moles of HCl will produce what? After every calculation, it results to 1.25 mole, which is option C. 25. Question 25 is C. Nuclear magnetic resonance technique. It is not one of the uses of a radioactive isotope. Then 26. Water can form complex ion when it coordinates with which of these ions? The answer is B. Cobalt. That's the only transition metal there. Remember, transition metals have the quality of forming complex ions when they react with uh, molecules that have at least one lone pair, such as water or ammonia. Then 27. It's talking about how to test for hydrogen sulfide. The answer is D. Sugar of lead means lead ethanoid. It is called sugar of lead because it is sweet to taste. But be warned, it is highly poisonous. It is extremely poisonous. So this is one of the tests to confirm hydrogen sulfide. On 28, the correct answer is D because that's the only option that obeys the two rules that must be met before pressure will have effect on the equilibrium position of a reversible reaction. You see the rules on the screen there. 29 is A. O steward process. This is not for making us steel. This is industrial way of producing HNO3 from the oxidation of ammonia. 30 is actually D. You watch my video here on dry distillation for the preparation of HNO3, laboratory preparation of uh, HNO3. You see what we call retort, which is used for dry distillation. For question 30, look at the equation. This is the normal reacting ratio. 2 is to 1 is to 2. Then the given volume, according to the question, is 20 cm cube of hydrogen gas and 20 cm cube of oxygen. Watch it. You can do it. 2 is to 1. That means 20 is to 10. If you do it in this case, it shows that oxygen is in excess. But you can also say if 20 was provided, you need 40 of this. And which shows that since 20 cm cube of oxygen was provided, it means that 40 cm cube of hydrogen is required, which means that 20 is less than what is expected. Therefore, hydrogen gas is in shorter supply, which means that oxygen was in excess. It was in short supply of 20 cm cube. It requires extra 20 before it could react completely with the 20 cm cube of oxygen provided. For question 32, the answer is A, which is nitrogen gas, as you can see there. Then we'll go to 33, you see how the calculation is done. Using dilution law, C1V1 is equal to C2V2. Doing your calculation well, you see that the final answer is 0 0.076, approximately 0 0.08, which is option D. Question 34 is zinc sulfide. Then 35 says, the answer is A, that's glucose D and glucose L. D is dextrose, then L is labial rotatory and dextrorotatory. You see the explanation on the screen. Question 36 is C, that is, is dehydrating property. That's why H2SO4 concentrated is used to produce ethene from ethanol. Some really, this process is called dehydration of ethanol. You can see there on the equation, the H2SO4 removes H2O from the C2H5OH, leaving behind C2H4. 37 says the advantage of using straight chain hydrocarbons over more branch chain is uh, because of uh, biodegradability straight chain hydrocarbons are more biodegradable than the branch chain therefore in the detergent industry today instead of using alkyl benzene sulfonoate it has been substituted with linear alkyl benzene sulfonoate because bacteria found the straight chain more palatable than the branched chain so which means using the linear one is more friendly to the environment it is an eco-friendly component of detergent Question 38 is A, that's benzene 1,4 dicarboxylic acid and inter 1,2 diol. These are the monomers of the polyester terylene. Option B are the monomers of nylon 6.6. Question 39, using second law of Faraday, you find out that the number of moles of uh, element discharged is, should be inversely proportional to the charges present on the ion, which means the higher the charge present, the lesser the number of moles discharged. So for that of copper, they gave us 6.4 grams was discharged. We have to convert that 6.4 first to mole. So 64 grams of copper means 1 mole, then 6.4 means 0 0.1 mole. Then if 0 0.1 mole of copper was discharged, the number of moles of silver that will be discharged is 0 0.2 because remember it is inversely proportional. Silver has plus 1 which means more moles of silver will be discharged. That's why silver will be 0 0.2 against copper that is 0 0.1. Therefore then following the calculation steps we have this here. Remember that one mole of silver weighs 108, that's the molar mass, therefore 0 0.2 will be what? 
you get 21.6 which is option d so the current that will, the quantity of electricity that will discharge 6.4 grams of copper will also discharge 21.6 grams of silver then we go to the question 40 which is talking about uh, solubility calculation how temperature can affect solubility of a given solute here check the calculation steps they are simple so you have to get the mass of solution the mass of solution at 90 degrees is 112 then at 60 it is 109 then cooling from 90 to 60 you have that you have 112 minus 109 which gives us 3 grams so it shows that 112 grams of saturated solution on cooling from 90 to 60 gave us 3 grams therefore from the question 70 grams will give what from the calculation it will give us 1.87 grams of the anhydrous salt which is approximately 1.9 Thanks for watching. This guide makes you prepared ahead. We don't know how prepared the coronavirus may delay the screening exam, but this is to keep you ready. Don't relent. Don't think there is still time. Stay subscribed, for we have more guides for you. The comment box is there for you. Use it to ask questions in any topic that you are finding difficult in chemistry, biology, biology, physics. We have specialists to handle you. Sir Majesty's Easy World Science Channel is the best. We make things easy for you. Thanks for watching. Once more.